welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you some Procreate tips and tricks that I personally use while drawing all of my illustrations. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and let's get going. So I'm starting here with quick shapes. Let's turn this squiggly line into a nice straight line. Draw your line, then keep holding your pencil on the screen to get this adjustable straight line. For the next step, you can hold your finger on the screen to get a perfectly horizontal or vertical line. You can now also snap it into all these perfect angles. So the same technique applies to most of the shapes that we know. Let's try a circle. When you hold your pencil at the end of the circle, you will get this adjustable smooth oval shape. And then if you hold your finger on the screen, it turns into a perfect circle. You can also tap on edit shape to adjust it the way that you like. Then tap anywhere to exit the edit shape action. We can also do the same with squares. Draw a simple square, don't put too much effort into it. Then you can hold your pencil and finger to create a perfect one. Also the same applies to triangles holding pencil and then finger. So holding your pencil only create a nice triangle and then holding your finger on the screen gets a perfect equilateral. And finally, you can get a perfect zigzag shape. Draw your zigzag, hold your pencil and then click on edit shape. You can now adjust the corners the way that you want them. Now let's talk about finger gestures. Starting with the most simple and highly used one, which is the undo gesture. Just tap on the screen with two fingers to undo your last action. You can also do this action multiple times by tapping on the screen with two fingers. Or you can do that by holding your two fingers on the screen and then removing them when you get the result that you want. Now for the redo action. So we undo with two fingers and then with three fingers we redo the last action. Now let's say you want to clear your entire canvas. Just swipe the screen with three fingers back and forth like this. For color selection, you can hold one finger on the screen and move it around to get any color you need from the canvas. Now to get back to your previous color, just tap and hold your pencil on the color icon and there we go. Now let's say you're editing your drawing and moving around the canvas to draw some little details. You can just pinch your canvas like this and you'll easily get back to full screen view. Now let's talk about layers. Let's say I have this shape on a layer and then on a new layer, I'm going to create another shape. Let's do this two more times. And now each shape is on its own layer. Now, to adjust all of these shapes at once, we need to select more than one layer. Swipe to the right like this with your pencil on a layer to select multiple ones. So now, if I tap on the arrow here, I can adjust all of these shapes together. Next, I'm going to talk about layer grouping. Let's select all of these layers and now we can tap here on group and we have this new group containing all of our shape layers. I can now select the group and easily adjust all of the shapes together. Now, to take this a step further, I can tap on the group and then tap on rename. This way I can give my group a name so I can recognize it if I have a project filled with a lot of layers. On the other hand, after selecting multiple layers, you can also move them around and place them wherever you need to. I'm just placing these outside of the group and then I'm deleting the group layer. Now let's talk about merging layers. You can either tap here and select merge down to merge this layer with the layer below it only. So now we only merge these two shapes together. Let's say you want to merge all of these shape layers together. All you have to do is just pinch them together like this and now they're all on one layer as you can see. Next, I want to take this layer to another file or canvas. What I can do is move the layer like this with my pencil, then tap my finger on gallery 
and choose the project that I want and release the layer on the canvas. Another thing you can do is create a new canvas for this layer. So just drag it, tap on gallery, and then tap on new, select your desired canvas, and now just release. Now you have this layer on a brand new canvas. Reference. This is very, very useful. On a new layer, I want to draw shape outlines in black like this. Now I want to fill out those shapes, but I'd hate to ruin my outline layer. So let me just undo that. In this case, create a new layer below the outline layer. Then go back to the outline layer, tap on thumbnail and select reference. As you can see, now it says reference right here. Next, go to the layer created below it and fill out the shapes like you normally would. As you can see, the color filled in the shapes on the new layer. This gives you so much more freedom and a non-destructive way to fill out your outline layers. Now let's talk about the famous alpha lock. On the new layer, I'm drawing a random shape, going in with a circle and I'm filling it out. I mostly use alpha log for shading, so let's say I want to shade the circle. I'm choosing a dark green and selecting a textured brush. If I go ahead and shade the shape now, the color will just go all over the shape and make a mess. Now let's undo that and alpha log the layer. You can tap on the thumbnail and select alpha log. Or for a quicker way, use two fingers and slide the layer to the right. As you can see, the thumbnail now shows a sort of checkers pattern behind our shape. This is an indication that alpha lock is on. Now when I go in with my brush to shade, I'm only shading within the circle I drew before. Alpha lock basically locks off any empty space on your layer, allowing you to shade within your shape only. The only downside for this method is that it makes it hard for you to come back and alter your work later on. Next, we have clipping mask. To use clipping mask, I'm going to add a layer on top of my circle layer. Tap on the thumbnail and select clipping mask. The layer now shows a little arrow to indicate that clipping mask is on. Now whatever I draw on this layer will be bound by the shape below it. As you can see, no matter where I draw on the canvas, it will only show within the circle. If I go ahead and disable clipping mask, you'll see what I actually painted on the layer. Now, if I add a new layer on top of the circle, it will automatically have clipping mask on for the circle layer. Now let's talk about layer mask. Let's go to this layer, tap on thumbnail and select mask. As you can see, I have my original circle layer here and I have this white canvas or mask layer on top of it. So on the mask layer, you can only paint in black and white or gray. So think of black as hiding whatever is under the mask layer and white is revealing. As you can see, black will mask or pretty much hide part of my circle. If I had used an eraser for this, the action would have been permanent. But with the mask, I can just select white and re-reveal the part I hid in case I made a mistake. It's really that simple. Finally, for the last section, I want to talk about grids and drawing assist. If you go to the wrench icon, go to canvas section and turn on drawing guide, you will get this 2D grid showing horizontal and vertical lines. So let's say I'm on this layer and I'm drawing regularly. But if I go ahead, create a new layer, tap on thumbnail and select drawing assist. As you can see, it says assisted right here to show that drawing assist is on. Now the grid will only limit my drawing down to vertical and horizontal lines. This is super helpful if you're drawing something very geometrical like a building or a city skyline, where you don't want to keep holding your pencil and your finger at the end of each line. Now let's go to this menu and tap on edit drawing guide. As you can see, you can edit the opacity, thickness and grid size. Next, let's select the symmetry guide 
and you can also choose the guide color here. Always make sure that your layer has drawing assist on or says assisted, otherwise it won't work. Now whatever I draw on the right side of the grid, it will be mirrored on the left side. Now let's go back to the edit guide again. While on symmetry, we have this option button to edit the guide. Horizontal means you flip the symmetry guide into a horizontal orientation. And there's also quadrant. Now let me show you what that does. Quadrant symmetry guide splits the screen into four sections like this. And whatever you draw on one section will be mirrored on the others. And finally, we have the radial option, which increases the splits on your screen. Let's try it out. Just reducing my verse size and as you can see whatever I draw on one section will be mirrored on all other sections which is honestly super satisfying. Now if I turn off grid here I have to go back and make sure that my layer does not say assisted or else even if the grid is not visible it will still be active on the layer as you can see. And that is it guys for today I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new that will be useful for you in your future illustrations. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and check out my step-by-step -step drawing tutorials. You can also follow me on Instagram and check out the rest of my work.